because of my conscience and belief for the human rights, the human dignity and democracy. I served in the prison for 18 years. I was a victim of militarism that long time violated human rights of citizens of our country. I was one among thousands, thousands of political prisoners who served many years of their lives in the prison for the same belief for the democracy and human rights. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank you, your country, your government and your citizens <coughs> for fervently supporting and calling for many years of our release from prison, including through the Human Rights Council resolutions. With repeatedly call from Myanmar people and the international community, we were released from the prison in January 2012. Since our release, we have been traveling across the country to meet with the people and communities, including <coughs> ethnic communities, ethnic political bodies, ethnic AMS groups. We listen to their hopes, aspirations, concerns, and needs. <coughs> While we are trying to empower them to exercise their rights, citizen rights, we also communicate with the international community and advocate for their rights. Most recently, we met with the special report here, Mr. Quintana. We discussed and shared with him on the current human rights situation in Myanmar. <coughs> and I'm very pleased to have reached the statement of Mr. Quintana as his statements reflect our concerns with regards to human rights situation in our country. And I want to thank him for that. We can say that Myanmar political landscape has changed after 2010 election. Along with elections, now we have parliament, executive and judicial organs in place. There is a separation of power, however, is still embarrassed. There is also a gap between policy and implementation of the changes. In addition, the role and participation of military in politics. Currently in 2008 constitution in Myanmar are key challenges for improvement of human rights in our country. Nevertheless, since after the by-election in 2012, we have seen some positive progress. Even though they are incomplete and still a long way to go, their progress includes such as increased media freedom, opening the space for the civil society and ongoing peace process between the government and ethnic AMS groups, as well as the government's increased cooperation with the international community. However, there are serious human rights problems that need to be addressed including widespread land confiscation, malpractice and abuses of various levels of authorities, 
lack of rule of law, malfunction of judiciary, and deep rooted corruption. There has been series of protests and demonstrations by farmers, workers, and citizens' rights activists, which were not response respond positively by authorities in some cases were even violent. More importantly, we need a sustainable solution for genuine peace and national reconciliation, which is a vital need for a successful transition to democracy and promotion and protection of human rights. In order for our country to become truly democratic, it is essential that the people in Myanmar can fully and safely exercise their freedom of expression, assembly and association. <coughs> we need the Human Rights Council and the special reporter to continue to encourage the government to carry out systemic reform to establish the rule of law. The government must develop an independent and impartial judicial system. They need to implement good governance practice and guarantee inclusive and safe participation of or in the reform process. Also, they must release all remaining political prisoners. And I want to call <clears throat> your support for the ongoing mandate of Special Report here and the Council's resolutions on Myanmar human rights situations, as well as the opening of Office of Human Rights Commission in Myanmar to ensure a peaceful and successful democratic transition and improvement of human rights situations in our country. Thank you for all attentions. <coughs>